And this is the what? Oh, yeah, because, okay. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to give this to Tom. And, yeah. Good morning, good morning, everybody. How was my mom? Okay. Okay, Becky. I got something for But she didn't send her food. Okay. We just make that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Okay. Everybody sit down. This is a great day. There's so many things going on. It is not even funny. For, for you people online, we just welcome you and excited for you to be here. All the things that are going on, we have four boxes up here that we are filling for uh, needy people. And uh, people are bringing food and food. And, and so we have more than probably we need, but we will keep uh, packing them. And David and Christy are helping us organize that. Uh, so also, uh, I have told you that we are send, we are wanting to give Christmas cards uh, to the people at Calvary Refuge when we go there. Uh, and inside each Christmas card, that will be uh, five dollars. And and if you uh, put get, have a Christmas card and put the five dollars in and just sign, you don't have to sign your name. Just say God bless you. Uh, and Merry Christmas, something like that in the inside. Uh, I have, and if you have any today, I have a little basket for them. If you uh, don't have a Christmas card and want to just, these are some extra that somebody sent me in the mail. You know how you get the free ones and, and they want you to give money and so forth. So, uh, so you can come and get those. That is, uh, so those are, that's going on, and you can go ahead and do that today if you want to. That's, that's all I had. I couldn't find the other ones. Um, then, listen carefully, we are sending uh, a sheet around for Calvary Refuge. Now, we just have this Sunday and next Sunday, 
for you to sign up for the Food for Calvary Refuge. This will, but we will be going there on the 12th, on the 12th of December, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, to serve food uh, at Calvary Refuge. So sign up for what you can bring, and uh, uh, Gwen is going to do the uh, hamburger steak with gravy, so that will be really good, and she will have that. And, uh, and so we just need sides, desserts, drinks, uh, and sandwich things like bread, chips, cookies. The chips will be in little individual bags. The cookies would be in little individual packages also. Okay, so anyway, this is it. Uh, sign up, and we'll sign up next week also. So, uh, so we'll send that around. So, uh, I, this is a busy time of year. Do you agree? So many things are going on. Even today, when we have our thankless this today, which we always have had, uh, there was a teachers meeting this morning. There was uh, th then there was uh, after church. I understand there's not only going to be a deacons meeting uh, right after church, but there's also going to be a meeting for the people who would like to go to Ukraine on a mission trip, and that would be in April. And so uh, uh, Jeff Warho will be leading that, and where is that mission trip? Ukraine. I know it's to Ukraine, but what, uh, where is the meeting? Uh, 105. 105? Okay, that's just downstairs in the sort of to the right. Uh, and so what? Okay. Can can our class renege on that? <laughs> we got so many other things going on. Uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, so our music, uh, music uh, Christmas at Jonesboro begins this Friday night, and I know y'all have a practice after this afternoon, and uh, and that's going to be so wonderful. I, how many of you have never been to the Christmas program at Jonesboro before? I think a long time ago. Long time ago, y'all, it'll blow you away. I promise. And it is something that I just encourage, encourage, encourage every person to invite somebody, to invite somebody. People usually come from way out of town, and, uh, and it is a precious time to worship the Lord. It's a precious time to be, uh, as we are talking about today, to be so inspired with holy, 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 uh, and, uh, and it is also a time that people receive the Lord. People uh, make a profession of faith, even at this time. Uh, I have followed up in the past where people have filled out a card and followed up and shared the gospel with people, and they were first presented there at the, uh, at, at the music uh, program. So I just encourage you not only to come, but to be sure to invite somebody. Uh, look, and we'll see that uh, we'll have our coffee and a little celebration here in our class on uh, the 17th. So come early for that. <coughs> Excuse me. And I mentioned the Ukraine trip, Jeff. And I think uh, we all settled about the um, about Thankmas today. I know that that other meetings, but just come over right after the meeting. There'll be plenty of food, and you can get your food, and then we're going to do some little activities after that. So, uh, everybody's civil. What? My son's going to be with me. Is that okay? Oh, yes, okay. of course it is. Of course it is. How's Joy doing? Huh? How's Joy doing? Joy Drummond. Joy is not here today. I was with her yesterday. I was going to say Joy and I uh, took a meal to Basola and Foley and uh, last night. And then uh, Basola is home from the hospital. The oh baby, <clears throat> the baby does not uh, 
uh, it doesn't seem that the baby will be home before the end of December. Mm -hmm. But the baby is the cutest little thing, and they are able to hold the baby, and, and Foley has even changed diapers. And, uh, and so, so it, there is three pounds, uh, eight ounces. And so she lost a couple of ounces right after she was born, but she's now three pounds, 11 ounces. So uh, she is making uh, wonderful progress, but she, it, she's teeny, but she's sort of all filled out and cherub looking. I mean, I, you can't say that she's fat, but, but her little arms are a little nicely plump and, and a little she's legs plump. Long, huh? so she's not long. She's, she's not long, long. no. She, and, but she is moving around and, and everything like that. So she's just adorable just and just has a head of hair. Uh, I know, I, just a precious. But I would uh, encourage you if you have a chance, and you can let me know uh, if you have a chance, if you're making something. And in fact, I thought I would make a plate for them today out of the things we have today. But, uh, you know, they so appreciate uh, a meal. Um, Foley is trying to work, and then they're trying to go to the hospital as many times as possible. I got pictures at 10 o'clock last night where they were back at the hospital and uh, with the baby. And so uh, it's back and forth and, and Basola is still having some pain. So, so anyway, uh, be sure to let me know if you want me to take it or if you want to take it. Uh, they just live off of Thomas Road in Jonesboro. It's not very far away. Uh, how many people need books? Anybody else need a book? Everybody got one? Ah, you want one or two? One, okay. You can have one for the family or you can have one a piece. Okay. The, uh, you mean the extra cards? There's some extra cards right there. Yeah, I'm gonna put it We'll not, uh, don't seal them. Oh, that's okay, that's okay. I'll open it up. The because we're gonna put a Chick Fil A card in each one, as well as the five dollars. So that's gonna be nice. That'll be a nice little gift. And they, they uh, were so. One year we were there, and one lady did not want to participate in the Christmas and all, and and so we gave out the cards, and everybody opened them and was so excited. And the, evidently the. The message got up to the lady that didn't want to participate. All of a sudden, she comes hurrying back down and sits down and participates. So that was good. <coughs> Anything else in the way of announcements? I just want to give my condolences to the Georgia fans. Oh. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry. I know. That was sad. That was sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is still recovering, but almost. She is with a uh, wound doctor down in Florida, and what's they had they had an estate sale Friday. This just this past Friday and Saturday, um, they every time they came home, they hauled something down. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. To get, you know, they moved across the street into a new home, and they have to sell that other one. So mm -hmm. there, that's what they're working on. She has not been released by the wound doctor. She sees him Tuesdays, so she's hoping this Tuesday. Um, and then uh, I'm having a, a, a friend gathering at my home on the 16th, and she has said they would be there no matter what. <laughs> so we'll see. I don't so know. Okay. Florida, Florida, or Florida, in Florida. 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 Yes, yeah. This is Lori Camp. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's begin and let's begin uh, with prayer. Everybody, just close your eyes and take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And just say the words, holy. Holy, holy. Oh, Father, you are holy. 
and we bow down before you. <coughs> In our minds, we humble ourselves, Heavenly Father. You are God Almighty, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There's no one like you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this group that's gathered here today to worship you through studying your word and, uh, and, and participating in this class. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this class that is so wonderful about serving you and serving others through, uh, serving you through serving others. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the kindness and the openness and the love that we share with each other. And Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will continue to be with us and guide us and uh, show us, Heavenly Father, how we can recognize and respond to your holiness in a greater way. Heavenly Father, guide us today open our hearts, open our minds, and, uh, and we just pray that the Holy Spirit will invade each of us and fill us in a very different way, in a unique way, as we study your word today. Thank you, Father, for being here today. Be with those who are traveling, be with those who are, are sick, and uh, just thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our new study, as you can see, your book, and up there, is called Holier Than Thou. And, of course, it's about God's holiness. I, but uh, what kind of person do you think would, that you could imagine would write a book about the holiness of God? Do you think maybe a professor in a seminary? Maybe? Or do you think it could be a theologian of some sort that would write about the holiness of God? Or maybe uh, a seminary uh, a professor or a preacher or, or somebody like that, an evangelist that goes around the world, a Billy Graham that would write about the holiness of God. If you will turn in your book <laughs> uh, and to the... First page on page six in your book, and uh, gives a little introduction to this to this series, to this study, and it says over here about the writer. Do y'all ever read that when you're? I, I don't know. I I always do because I want to know who it is that's that's giving me the word. I want to know about them. And so I was reading about Jackie Hill Perry, whom I did not know and never heard of, and I found out that she was an author, a poet, a Bible teacher, an artist, and, uh, and that she was a speaker and had all sorts to share and, and teaching, uh, to share the light of the gospel of God authentically. I thought, oh, she's married, she has four children, she's written books, and look down at the last book there, it says what? Mm. Gay, gay, girl, good gay God. girl, good God. Oh, good God. Oh. I'm looking at that. And I go down to that and I go, whoa. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. So, you know, I look her up. <laughs> I look her up. I don't. I want to find out who this person is. Who this person is. Well. Found out that she's not only all of those things, she's so, also a Christian hip hop artist. Um, but, but she has, in her experience with God, now listen carefully, in her experience with God, she was, as a child, she was sexually abused and uh, multiple times. And, uh, and which caused her, in her terms, to have gender, gender confusion, gender confusion. And she began to think that she was a lesbian. Uh, she struggled with drugs. She struggled with drugs. And, but then in 2008, <clears throat> she was converted to Christianity. Now, she was not just said a little prayer. She was mightily converted to Christianity. 
and she believes that God can change lives and empower believers to resist any kind of temptation. And as she has developed since 2008, she has so radically uh, changed, so radically changed that, uh, and one of the things that radically changed her is that if you look at, on that introduction, she says in that first paragraph, I don't remember the day I thought about it. What I know is that I wanted an answer. If God is holy, then he can't sin. Do you agree with that? Yes. If God can't sin, he can't sin against me. Whoa. If he can't sin against me, shouldn't that make him the most trustworthy being there is? She was longing for someone to trust. She had not been able to trust anybody in her earlier life. And when she was so radically saved, she began to think about <laughs> sin, about the holiness of God, and about because he is so holy, I can trust him. I can trust him. And so that's really what our lesson is all about. That's what our lesson is all about. Uh, I, as I've read the lessons, I've, I don't know if any of the rest of you have read any of them, but they're beautifully written. They're beautifully written. And, and I just got really excited about this study in thinking about the holiness, the holiness of God, the breathtaking holiness of God. I felt like she gets God. <laughs> and, uh, and even coming from incredibly hard times like she did. So uh, I want you to know that I'm going to do a little bit different. You will not be getting handouts. We're going to use the book. We're going to use the book. And this is our plan to, so I want you to study the book. And I know that Becky has already studied. She called me last night to tell me that she had already studied the lesson. And I so appreciate it. But I want you to study the book. I want you to bring the book with you uh, to class because we're going to refer to it. I'll say turn to page whatever, and we will refer to the book. And uh, we're going to talk about God's holiness, but before we talk about the holiness, I thought it would be helpful uh, to refer to a few names that God is called in the Bible. Now, most of you know these, and so I know you can, can help me or, um, you know, agree with me or whatever. But in the beginning, and this is really pretty much throughout Genesis, God is translated, the Hebrew word was Elohim, and, uh, and it is translated, don't worry about that, and it is translated in the English, it's just translated God. This is the English, God. El Shaddai is, uh, means God Almighty. And in my Bible, and I have new, uh, New International Version, uh, God Almighty and El Shaddai is translated God Almighty, and so it just says that. So that's translated. But then there's a Hebrew word that doesn't have any vowels, and the Hebrew word is a uh, <laughs> got it. And here's a new book. Okay. The Hebrew word doesn't have any vowels. Somebody tell me why. The Hebrews. That's right. God was so holy, they didn't even want to say the word. So they didn't put any vowels in it, so you couldn't pronounce it. So it is uh, Y-H-W-H. Now, in Hebrew, it you would go backwards like that. But uh, it was such a holy word that you didn't say it and you didn't write it 
So you just wrote the letters. You just wrote the letters. Even How? Today, even today. Huh? Even today, Jewish people don't put, they put a dash instead of an O when they write God. Do they really? A lot of Jewish people do. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, but but then later, the, the, actually the root word is H-W-Y. <laughs> Going backwards, because they read from uh, from right to left. Uh but going uh, H W Y was the root word, which means, and 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 we know and we remember from Moses' time, when uh, Moses said, "Who should I say, uh, am, tell the children?" And he and God said, "I, I am, am who I am. I am." And so the root word actually means, "I am." Mm -hmm. Later on, later on, and I am would mean eternal. It would mean underived existence. But later on, vowels were put in, and so then it became Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh. Mm -hmm. uh, even in some translations, and I don't know whether it's yours or not, they changed the Y to a J. Uh, what is it? And came up with Jehovah. However, depending on your translation, but but what mostly mostly this word right here shows up in your Bible is translated into English as Lord, all capital letters. Now you look at your Bible, and you'll see Lord in all capital letters. But that is referring back to Yahweh, I am who I am. It defines his holiness. And it defines his holiness. All capital letters. Well, if, if what it usually is, is the first letter is bigger, but they're still all capital. Then there's a word called Adon Adon Adonai. <coughs> Excuse me. Adonai. And it literally, Adonai, yeah. And uh, it literally means my Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it means owner, master, authority, and it is translated in our English Bible as a capital L but a little O-R-D. That's how it's and then I just put this one in uh, at Abba at the end. Mm -hmm. Just put, put it in because that's what Jesus called God at uh, at the cross. What? Most yes, yes, yes. But it at, but at the end, Jesus called God. Abba. Now, this was a very big departure because this was so personal, so intimate, that it was unheard of in the Jewish, uh, with the Jews, to be <coughs> that personal with God. And it actually came from the word Dada, which was so funny because that's what I call my grandfather. <laughs> and uh, but uh, but it means pretty much loosely translated, it means daddy. Just personal. Those are just some of the as we look at uh, as we look at the uh, the different names we want to begin. Of course, there are others. There are many others. There are, there are thirty more main names in the Bible that God is called and and and. And then one place that I was looking up said that there were 100, uh, actually more than 100, of either names or titles that God is called. So there, there are a lot, depending on the on on the, what how you want to describe God. What? The, 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 the Dada, uh, you say is daddy, does it ever translate as father, or does it come from the root word Dada, yeah. daddy? Yeah. And then people assume or say it's father. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a personal, it's a very personal thing. 
uh, with you. Isn't it interesting that Jesus calls him daddy, and in the Old Testament, Yahweh, it was so, you didn't even say the say word. The word. Uh-huh. Yes. And, and it was such a such a relationship that such a relationship such a relationship yeah, I, I thought that the uh, you know the like Septuagint and the, 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 the Greek the, the, tra- the, the scripts that the, the Bible come from and then the King James that says uh, God the word you know they're so holy we're going to take it out to the place it was God about four to seven thousand times throughout the whole Bible so originally it was like Jehovah Yahweh before all the uh, manipulations and with well, the translation and and King James version was not even translated from the original Hebrew or Greek. It was translated from the Latin, uh, the Vulgate. So, 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 yeah. that right. so that's right. So, but, you know, it seems like some people think that the God yeah. wants you to have a relationship with Him and to know His name and have a personal, you know, a name. Yes. Not just God. Yes. Because He's loving and caring and all knowing and encompassing. That's right. You want to call somebody. That's right. That's right. Now, let's look, look at now to the book. If someone, if a person was considered <coughs> holier than thou, do you think that they could be trusted? <laughs> oh, he's holier than thou. No. What does that usually signify? Signif- He's a holy roller. <laughs> well, so a holy roller could. A what? Hypocrite. 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 Yeah. yeah. He's just so, you know. Judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but this study explores the amazing truth that since God is holy, he can be trusted. He can be trusted. That's the big thing. And you can write it at the top of your page. Since God is holy, he can be trusted. He can be trusted. So today we're going to look at the holiness of God as a... Whoa. (laughs) Or... Two woes, but they mean entirely different things. Entirely different things. So, let me ask you. In, I say, God is, what would you say? God is what? Love. Love? God is everything. Everything? God is, come on, peace, Peace. God is all-knowing, I don't know, anyway, what is, I'm telling you. She's spelling it. She's spelling it. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 I got left out the N. Right. Um, yes, yes, I left it out the N. Thank you. It's real. Okay, okay. We're not going to worry about that. All knowing, all knowing, all knowing. That's what it is. All knowing. What else? God, come on. God is love, everything, peace, mercy. God is merciful. Merciful. What? Merciful. God is, is healer. What else? Come on. Somebody said almighty. Almighty. Creator. Creator. My father. Creator. My father. Father. Uh, Come on. What about righteous? Is God righteous? Come on. Righteous. Is God justice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now we're getting into... How can he be <coughs> justice and love at the same time? 
Yeah. You love your children. Huh? You love your children, but you hopefully meet out justice to them for their wrongdoing. Okay. And you can do that. <laughs> Did your parents ever say, this hurts me more than it does you? And no. I thought, they are lying. <laughs> That's no truth. <laughs> or, or I love you too much to let you. Oh, I love you too much to let you keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, God's justice is because he loves you. If he didn't love you, he'd just let you do anything you want to. I wanted you to. Uh, you wanted to. But because he loves you. Listen to this. God is good. And what about this one? God is purity. What does that mean? God is purity. Without blemish. Without sin. Without blemish. Without sin. He is morally pure. Yes. He cannot morally do anything that is against his nature, that is against against his own. So, if God, and then nobody said, omnipresent. well, omnipresent, omni, omniscient, omnipresent, uh, so he's all-knowing, all, uh, all-present, all, what's the other one? Powerful. All, Powerful. All powerful. Yeah, thank you. But above all, above all, God is holy. God is holy above all things. See, all of those things, uh, all of those things are aspects of God. God is love. He, he just doesn't love. He is love. He just doesn't uh he just doesn't, uh, isn't just merciful. He is mercy. But above everything, above everything, God is holy. What does the word holy mean? Anybody? Without blemish. Uh, sacred. Sacred, without blemish. It is also. He cannot sin. He cannot sin. Almighty, you got it. You're coming. But the holiness actually means set apart. <coughs> set apart. You see, his love, his love is <coughs> holy. His peace is holy. His omnipotence is holy. His uh, mercy is holy. His righteousness is holy. His justice is holy. His goodness is holy. His purity is holy. It is, his love is set apart from any kind of thing we know and can understand. The peace that he gives is set apart from all that we can understand. God is holy. He is so set apart from anything we can understand. Look at uh, page 13 in your book. See, I told you we are going to use the book. And look at that top paragraph. It talks about God is transcendent. That means he's over everything. He's above everything. Uh, and it's, uh, read with me that first paragraph. You can just read it with me. It means God is totally unique from everything there is. God doesn't exist and cannot exist in the same way we do, or anything for that matter. Setting him apart from all creation as being that is distinct from it. Holy, God's holiness is about moral purity, yes. It's also about transcendence, self-existence, otherness. It's about being totally right and eternally existent, which, of course, only God is. Wow. I read a book back in, I can't remember whether, I think it was, I was a senior <coughs> in college, and it was called, Your God is Too Small. 
Your God is Too Small. It was written by J.B. Phillips, who did a modern translation of the, uh, the Bible. And, uh, and it was, Your God is Too Small. And it was, it talked about, so often we look at God as a grandfather, and we cry him up in his lap, and he pats us and gives us a goodie and a sucker and sends us on our way. Or we look at God as a policeman who scolds us and is going to send us to jail. Or we look at God in all these different ways. But folks, your God is too small. When we begin to open our mind to see the holiness, the total uniqueness, apart from creation, no beginning, no end, self-existent, holy God. It almost takes your breath away. It almost takes your breath away. So now, go to Isaiah 6. We're just going to read the first four uh First four verses in Isaiah 6. And then we're going to come back to page 11 in your book. Okay. It says, Isaiah was, is, is writing this. In the year that King Uzziah died, now King Uzziah uh, died in about 740 B.C., I just give you that little information. So then in the year about 740 B.C., <laughs> Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. Now this is his vision. And how he saw the Lord, listen how he saw him. He was high and lifted up, exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his throne, uh, of his robe, filled the temple. Above him was seraphim, Seraphim were a special kind of angel. Uh, seraphim, each of them had six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. Oh, he was so holy, they could not even look upon him. They covered their faces. And with two, they covered their feet. That was meaning he was so holy, they were in such humility, they had to cover their feet. And then he says, and with two wings, they were flying around and they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At that sound, at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Now, looking at that, go to page 11. And look at the activity on page 11. And yet we can fill it in. And we see what did Isaiah see? What did he see when he had this vision of God? You write it down. It was nothing like he had ever seen before. Would you agree? No matter who King Uzziah was, no matter how earthly kings he had seen, it was nothing like he had seen before. He was exalted. He was exalted. What did, what did Isaiah hear? What did he hear? He heard the seraphim saying, what? Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. They were calling out. How many times did they say it? Three times. Three times. You remember what we have talked about that means? He's trying to get your attention. He's trying to get your attention. This is absolutely important. This is absolute. Absolute. You know, Jesus would say when he would talk to the crowds, he would say, verily, verily, or truly, truly. He'd only say it two times. In Hebrew, 
the more you said the same thing, the more importance it was, the more important it was. And Jesus was saying, truly, truly, I tell you, and this is, imp meaning this is important. Listen up, turn your ears. But here, here he's saying, the, uh, the seraphim was saying, holy, 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 three times. The other time this is said is in uh, Isaiah, I mean, in uh, Revelations 4, 8, where again, when John had a vision of heaven and the Lord lifted up the seraphim and cherubim, which were sort of the same thing, kinds of angels just to worship the Lord, uh, they were saying the same thing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Wow, that was important. So, what, then go down, then go down to verse 5. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so in verse 5, it says, He saw all of this. His breath was taken away. He was saying, Whoa! And then in verse 5, he doesn't say, Whoa! anymore. What does he say? Whoa. Woe is me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Woe. Woe. Isaiah had a vision of God that was a woe, that was awesome, that was mind-blowing, that was inspirational. But when you read in verse 5, his vision turned from woe to woe is me. Why? Well, he said he, uh, he felt unclean. He felt he unclean. Before what? the presence of the Lord. Before? Yeah, I, yeah, I think, uh, at least for me, I, you, you, you see all the sin in the world around you and you mm -hmm. think you look pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a glimpse of the actual holiness of God, you really realize how, how unclean you really are. I can are. hardly breathe. I can hardly breathe. That's right. Mm -hmm. You against the holiness of God is filthy rags. Is filthy rags. No matter how good you are and how moral you are and how many good things you do against the holiness <coughs> of God, we are all filthy rags mm -hmm. except Jesus. Except Jesus. Except Jesus. All right, turn to page 15 in your book. Of all the actions that Isaiah could have taken in that moment, why did he confess his sinfulness? Because he recognized the holiness of God and how mighty he is. He can bring tears to your eyes. Mm -hmm. Imagine he compared himself to God. What? He compared himself to God. Yeah. And he Again, he would, exactly what you were saying. He was confronted with the purity of God, with the holiness of God, and compared to God. Well, and he would have known in the earlier that God told Moses, you cannot look upon my face yeah. or you will die. Yeah. And yeah. he's saying, oh, I'm undone because I've seen his face. Yeah. But look at the next one. And, and, and uh, you can turn to Matthew, but you probably already know that. Of all the sins Isaiah could have confessed, why did he choose uh, his words or speech as saying, I am a, uh, I am a man of unclean lips? A reflection of the heart? Yes, that's exactly what Matthew says. Matthew says what? 
What's in the heart comes out of the mouth. What's in the heart comes out of the mouth. And defiles the man. So any cursing that you do, and I hope you don't, but any that you do, it's from your heart, folks. Mm -hmm. Any uh, hatefulness, any division, any <clears throat> prejudice, anything that you say is really comes from the heart. It really comes from the heart. So that's why James talks about the 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 mouth is like a, is a small part of our body, but it's like an unbridled horse. You know, it can run wild. That tongue can run wild. It can hurt people to the core. And if ever there was the biggest lie that was ever told children, it was sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. Folks, that's a lie. That's a lie. Calling somebody a name can hurt to the core. That's why I have such a hard time with even... Uh, sarcasm. I have a hard time with sarcasm because sarcasm can hurt people to the core. And you say it was just meant in jest. It was just funny. Oh, they don't. They didn't take that seriously. But folks, I can remember sarcasm. I can remember hurtful words far more than I could ever remember. You know, a bump or a push or. A fight with my sister or <laughs> any of those. What, Mike? I always think about uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, said the heart is deceitful and wicked. Who can know the heart? Okay, say it loud. The, Jeremiah 17, 9, said the heart is deceitful and wicked. I know the heart. I examine the heart. So we stand for the Lord. People always talk about God knows my heart. You got to be careful because he knows the secret motives of the heart, everything of the heart. So you stand before God. You have to come because he knows. He, and you come... Woe is me. Woe is me, how you come to God. Uh, why? Uh, uh, as opposed, let me just say, as opposed to cheap uh, views of a soft, tolerant God many, that many people hold today, this vision did not immediately make Isaiah feel better. The more clearly he saw God's holiness, the more clearly he saw his own sinfulness. Why do you think that recognizing I am undone is a good place to be? It's not a good feeling, but it's a good place to be. Why, Barbara? It, it what? It makes you humble. Exactly. It makes you humble. Some people have more confidence in things that they need. And they think a lot of themselves if they feel like they know the Bible or they, you know, they think they're right up there, I guess. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yes. That, but I, being undone is a good place to start because the hardest thing for us to do is to humble ourselves, to humble ourselves before God. And so that's where we start. That's where we start. What determines whether... A revelation from God's of God's holiness is terrifying or awe-inspiring. What determines that? Thank you. What determines whether a revelation from God, whether I mean whether you see go to the music, you know. Oh, that's so wonderful. That's so awe-inspiring. That's that's just oh that mean oh I just love that that all that music that the choir did and the orchestra did. It was so awe-inspiring. What's the difference between that and and uh and 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 uh and a transformational experience? It's the way you receive it in the spirit. The way you receive it in the spirit, right? What's the difference between woe or woe? You can know what's in the heart. Sure. You have to know what's in the heart. It's your relationship with Jesus. It's your relationship with Jesus. It's your relationship. <clears throat> My woe, this is where you come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can be inspired with the music or with some of the beauty of the of the earth 
or Grand Canyon looking out over all of that or whatever, a beautiful day. You can be inspired by that. But unless you come to the woe in the humility and the awe uh, uh, and uh, before God, you will never have a transformational experience. What? I, I was just thinking it's sort of full circle. It's like you come to God with the woe of how undone you are. And then that becomes a wow. He loved me enough and Jesus makes me clean yes. in his sight. Yes. And that's, that's awe-inspiring. Exactly. That, you know, knowing it, what he knows. It, oh, absolutely. A woe is my response with confession, with humility. Use me, Lord. My, no matter what you say, my answer is yes. That's the transformation. That, this is great, but folks, you start here, and once you're here, then, then what did Isaiah say? He said, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth, and he said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has been taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Now, the cold didn't do that. God uh, uh, God did that for him. G and for us, Jesus on the cross did that for us. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. The difference between... I mean, being inspired, being, you know, overwhelmed with God's goodness and over, that's good. That's good. I don't mean to say that's not good. That's good. But only when you come to realize who you are in light of who God is. And with that, you say, here am I, Lord, send me. Will that ever be a transformational response? ever be a transformational um, experience. How can recognizing our woefulness before God help us to learn to trust him? Look on page 17 and then if you will just write your own on the, on the bottom of 17, what response does your wonder of God prompt it, you to do? How God would look at my people put hands and robes on and stuff. Well, maybe it appears to everyone differently. So the most majestic and often thing that king could see, Isaiah, was somebody of this billowing long one. That's right. Robe. That's what kings were for them. So, you know, um, Greg just showed me something here. And then I looked something up. It says, Having the image or likeness of God made in the center of stones that we were made to resemble God. Adam did not resemble God in the sense of God having flesh and blood. Uh, scripture says that God is spirit in John 4, 2, 4. And therefore, just about a body. However, Adam's body did mirror the life of God insofar as his spirit in perfect health was not subject to death. The image of God, Latin, imagio dea, refers to the immaterial part of man. So we are created in God's image. I can see that. I can see that in my mind. We are created in God's image, but not in... Not like but not in vision. God's likeness. Uh, the image that we are created in is that we, our spirit is in cre created yeah, it, the I'm same thinking. as God's spirit. If that, I was just like to put arms and legs and a robe on him, it would just make it just too high in my mind. I know. But not to the king, not, not to Isaiah, or not uh -huh. to you or somebody else. I think it would, it would come to us in a different way. Yeah, it comes to us. Would you bow your heads? Father, begin to help us to see your glory. Begin to help us to see your holiness. Help us to examine our, each of our own hearts where the words come out. Help us, Heavenly Father, to, um, to get to the point that we are so overwhelmed with your holiness that we say yes to whatever you ask us to do. <coughs> oh, 
Holy, 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 Lord God of mighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Amen. I want you to know that some of the time that that I was studying this, uh, I mean, I were, I guess, decorating our little Christmas tree, and the Messiah was playing in between a, a son is born <laughs> and, and hallelujah chorus and all the other, we were praising the Lord. <laughs> it, was, oh, a, so cool. it was great. That's neat. It was great. That is so cool. See you at Thanks Thankless. <laughs> And study your lesson for next week, and I'll let you teach it. We are so excited to see Frida and Tino back. <laughs> We want you to work at things now. We'll have a cloud or have to bring it in. Yeah.